I want to really discuss the Battle of Bramall Lane with you. So this was West Brom against Sheffield United. Sheffield United ended up with six players on the pitch and then actually the referee, Walston, he just called the game off because there wasn't enough players playing. What was t Talk about the sort of build-up to this. Was there anything special in the build-up to this match? Was there already a bit of a simmering rivalry going on? Yeah, there was. Andy Johnson, who played for West Brom as Albion, had actually elbowed George Santos, midfield player for Sheffield United, and fractured all his, his cheap bow and eye socket, etc. So it was a real bad one. And um, so, obviously, the return match was heading that way. George Santos was back to fitness. Um, Neil Warnock decided not to play him. Um, it was always a big game anyway between. It was a bit of rivalry to yeah. try and get out of the championship, etc. And it didn't start well for us. Simon Tracy, our goalkeeper, he got sent off. And then it went from a bit from bad to worse <laughs> from there, Jake. Um, he brought on George Santos and immediately... That was a good idea. Immediately he thought, well, he'll set the tone, let's see if we can spice yeah. it up a little bit, um, create a tempo. And the ball dropped short, and obviously it was to Johnson. Yeah. And George decided to go full out, real long lunge, two footed tackle. And at the time, and I know you'll say this, I didn't think, I didn't think, oh, is that really that bad? But after seeing it afterwards, it was a really, really bad tackle. And Melly afterwards, then there was a headbutt straight away at that called Patrick Sufo. He got sent off. So we were down to eight men on the pitch and the game's going on and it's getting very heated. As you can see in the clips, Keith Curl, he didn't he didn't hold back. Even Jagielka was in the game as well. And Eddie Wilson, the, the, the actual the referee at the day, he was realising now the game was in jeopardy coming towards yeah. seven. So didn't want what, to send what's the atmosphere like on the pitch then at this point? It was. It was just. Is everyone getting, out looking for revenge, and it was really. It was just getting that well. The game's gone, and it it it, 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 it was ridiculous. Really, it got uh, battling from both sides. Derek McInnes, who you can see, he's, he's he had uh, stitches into his head. Benedicio. It just become really, hey. Benedicio. Yes, it is. Yeah. So it just become uh, Doby as well. Doby, yeah. It just become extremely heated. And actually, I met the the, the referee at uh, Manchester City Sheffield United game. He was yeah. the assessor the weekend where the referee got in the way. And he said, hey, you, he said, you said I should have sent you off and a few others in the game. And he's always remembered for the referee. And there he is in the clip in that, in that game. And it's quite surreal that you've asked me today about to talk about That's him. Funny. I've never only just seen him. Um, but as the game developed, it went to 3-0. Yeah. And you couldn't get near anybody. And you're just wondering, can this end? We've got to get off the pitch. It's, it's pointless. Um, and I ripped my hernia as I actually tried to grab Derek McGuinness as he was <laughs> as he was running away from me. So I went, one way I went to get off. Injury. I went off and uh, then Rob Ullathorn at left back was left there with a hamstring injury and Gary Megson didn't get on with Neil Warnock. So as the game finished, he said we deliberately tried to get the game abandoned. And we just thought at the time, didn't really think that much of it. Um, you got in the showers and then you realise people coming down the car park, the media attention, it's never happened before to be a game abandoned. So it's not it's not ideal to have been involved in it. Well, so you were on the pitch, you end up with six players because the settings off from the injuries and you're then afterwards in the in the changing room and you don't think it's a big deal? Well, you think it's a big deal. You, you're sort of saying, I can't believe this has actually happened. But what, what West Bromwich Albion was saying is we were trying to engineer that to be called off to yeah. play the game again. But I think we were coming towards the end of the season, they were going towards promotion and we were sat in 12th, so it was never it was never a case of us wanting another game. And I think these lads will tell you when, when you've got nothing to fight for going towards the back end of the season, yeah. it's the last thing you want is another game. And did you did you revel in a in an atmosphere in a situation like that? Well, I, I've never been one to sort of shirk it to get involved and 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 make things happen on a pitch or try to try to upset a rhythm when you Possibly not as good as others. That would be one thing I would have I would have done. Um, but in that in that Sheffield United team, uh, we had a good side. We could have went toe to toe with West Bromwich Albion as we were getting better. But I think the whole situation, the way it ended up, become really uh, a really poor game. And, and and you do regret being involved in, in in such a game. What are your memories of what Neil was saying on the touchline and afterwards? Well, I think he was at war with Gary Megson also. Uh, I'm not sure they've actually So he was setting the tempo, since. right? Well, you can imagine Neil doesn't doesn't hold back, but uh, he, he he obviously doesn't didn't condole what George Santos went on and done. He yeah. tried to get that revenge situation, but uh, just when you're showing us the pictures there before, it's um, it was just a crazy crazy afternoon.